I have to tell you, even after season one of The Mandalorian, I didn't really think that a lot could surprise me this season. Because going into season one, we didn't really know anything. We knew it was about Mandalorian, it was after episode six of Star Wars, but that's about it. And then going into this season, well, being a season two of a very, very popular acclaimed show, we knew a lot more. And spoilers for chapter nine of The Mandalorian, episode one of season two, but a lot of what we thought was gonna happen, happened. Boba Fett is back. And we have to assume the rumors of Bo-Katan, Sabine, Ahsoka Tano, Moff Gideon with the Darksaber fighting Ahsoka, we have to assume that most of it's gonna be true. There's a lot less that can really surprise us this season. So to say I was genuinely surprised with basically everything about this episode is an understatement. Was it for good? Was it for bad? Let's talk about it. Just like last review, I'm going to be going non-spoiler and spoiler for this discussion, and I will clearly delineate when the spoiler section will start, so don't worry about that at all if you haven't seen the episode yet. However, I will be spoiling elements from episode 1 of season 2 as well as all of season 1, so if you haven't seen that, then you've been warned. And for these Mandalorian reviews, I know I'm reusing a lot of the same footage from season 2 and season 1. Again, I apologize, but they just haven't given me a lot to work with, so again, apologies for that. If you haven't subscribed already, then please make sure to do so, and without further ado, let's get into the review. So, okay, no spoilers, I promise. But I have to tell you up front, it's really hard not to talk about spoilers with this episode because essentially, after the ending of last episode, episode 2 could have gone anywhere. It was pretty open-ended. I mean, we could assume that Din Djarin, Mando, was gonna go try to look for more Mandalorians, that's the goal of the season, right? Or look for Jedi or something. But other than that, we saw Boba Fett and that was it. And honestly, that is one of the frustrating things about season 1 in my opinion. The fact that each episode was pretty standalone. It wasn't until episode 7 and 8 when the episodes really got interlocked and you couldn't watch one without seeing the other, and I really like that about television. So that's one of the reasons I was a little disappointed with season 1 is because each episode didn't really feel like it connected to a larger story. And while I thought episode 1 of season 2 was amazing, it was great, I also noticed that, yeah, it was also a standalone episode. So there's not a lot I can talk about non-spoiler, but there are a few things that I can touch on. First of all, the director. So the director of this episode may be familiar to you guys, it's Peyton Reed. Now, Peyton Reed, if that name doesn't ring a bell, is the director of the two Ant-Man films in the MCU. And honestly, I really enjoy the two Ant-Man films. I do. I think they're really great additions and just breaths of fresh air in the otherwise pretty same similar vein of the MCU. And he's most well known for comedy. He's really good at just taking those down-to-earth funny moments, which is a tone that Mandalorian didn't really adapt in season one. I mean, yes, episode 8 was directed by Taika Waititi, but that's a little bit more absurdist comedy. Like the whole, hey baby, wave your hand thing, that's Taika Waititi, through and through. Peyton Reed's style is a little bit different. He's a little bit more down to earth, like I said before, and just a little more grounded in his humor, but it's still very, very funny. And I can tell you from the very, very first couple minutes that you can tell immediately this is Peyton Reed. If you watch the quote-unquote cold open of this episode before the title comes on, and you were asked, who directed this episode? Probably one of the names, if you could remember him, would have been Peyton Reed. This episode feels different than any of the other episodes of The Mandalorian. It's not just that it's funny, which it is funny. There are a lot of good laugh out loud moments in there, and there are a lot of good moments of cute Baby Yoda. Of course, we'll get to him in just a second, but it just has a different tone. I'll talk a little bit more about this in the spoiler section, but one of the things that I noticed while watching this episode is that it doesn't necessarily feel like Star Wars. It feels like Star Wars characters in a sort of Earth setting, which was actually kind of bizarre. I won't go into specifics, but there are a couple moments where I went, that's not necessarily something that would function in the Star Wars universe. But Peyton Reed kind of tries to force it in there and try to make it organic, and it sort of works because you kind of get on board with his style after a little bit, but it is still a little bit weird. So okay, what else can we talk about? Well, probably not the story, because if you hadn't seen the episode, then you wouldn't know anything about what the episode was going to be about, so we're not going to really touch on the story here. I will say, though, while I was thoroughly entertained, and trust me, I mean thoroughly entertained for the 40-minute runtime, I still was a little disappointed with the story. I can't go into specifics here, but just leaving the episode, I thought, yeah, I had a great time. In fact, I had an even better time this episode than last episode, strangely enough, but there's something missing there. 
I will say though, there is one thing, and if you don't want to know any spoilers at all for this episode, please just skip ahead about 5 to 10 seconds because this is a tiny, tiny minor spoiler starting right now, but this episode does lead into the next episode. Like, it does look like it's going to be a continuation between one episode to the next, so I think that's a good thing. But again, that doesn't necessarily even apply to this episode in particular. It's sort of the season as a whole, so I can't really say that it's a good thing this episode did, but whatever. Another thing I can talk about is visuals. There's some action in this episode, and the action is gorgeous. It is shot in such a precise, crisp, meticulous way that you can see everything that's going on, and you just feel immersed in the action scenes. And that's one of the strengths of this episode by far. Because people forget when you watch the Ant-Man films, Peyton Reed is really good at the character interactions, the humor, Scott Lang, Evangeline Lilly as Hope, Michael Douglas, all of them meshing really well together, but he's also really good at the action. Some of the scenes in Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp are really, really cleverly done. And while there's nothing in this episode that makes you go, wow, he just reinvented Star Wars action for generations to come, the action is done so spectacularly well that I have to give major props to Peyton Reed. Other than that, I really can't talk about that much. Chances are though, if you're watching this video, you've seen the episode and you want to talk spoilers, so let's talk spoilers. Before I do though, overall, Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 2 I thought was so entertaining, and yet there was something missing there. It will keep you entertained for the entire runtime, it'll keep you on the edge of your seat, dare I say, but at the end of the day, you're not really going to walk into this episode thinking, that was amazing, that was the best episode of Mandalorian ever, you're going to think, yeah, that was super fun, and maybe super forgettable. So I'm going to give Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 2, Chapter 10, a B- and a 6.75 out of 10. Alright, on to spoilers. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, final spoiler warning, let's get into it. Okay, first of all, the first 5 minutes of this episode, or whatever that cold open was, I thought was some of the best Mandalorian I've ever seen. Just the entire opening, the way the tension is built where Mando's speeding across Tatooine, and you see these scavengers, whoever they are, and then you see Mando like, okay, I'll give you the jetpack, and he gives him the jetpack, and you just know what's coming, but you're just waiting, ready to see it happen, and he launches the guy in the air and gets the jetpack back, and it was so, so, so good. After that title card ended and the title came up, I thought, this is going to be the best episode of Mandalorian ever. At the time, though, I didn't really think about the fact that the cold open really had nothing to do with the episode at large, and it doesn't. So let's talk about the rest of the episode. So one of the things I really didn't talk about in the non-spoiler part, I could have talked about it a little bit more, is the fact that Baby Yoda gets a lot more time to shine than he does in episode 1, which I think is always a good thing. I think Jon Favreau is always very careful to not overuse him, and I don't think he does in this episode, but there are times where you go, oh Baby Yoda, you shouldn't have done that, like when he ate the egg for example, or when he's just constantly eating the other creature's eggs, we'll talk about that person in a second. But overall, great use of Baby Yoda, as always. Now let's talk about Frog Lady. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this character. I'm just not. It's not like she's Jar Jar Binks by any stretch of the imagination, but I just don't really see the point. Maybe I will see a point because like I said before, episode 2 does seem like it's tying directly into episode 3, which I'm super happy about. No more isolated episodes, please. Let's just have each episode lead directly into the next one so we know, okay, he's trying to deliver the eggs, he's going to be on that water planet on the boat, but I just don't really know about this frog lady character. I mean, she must have some purpose, and maybe her husband is some really important character. Because he knows some Mandalorians, I guess, but I don't know. I mean, at least she couldn't talk, because unlike that blue alien guy who's going to come back in this season, ugh. Let's just say I'm not excited for him to come back, but that's a whole different story. But going back to an earlier point I made, there are some points in this episode where it just doesn't feel like Star Wars. It feels like Earth with Star Wars characters, and what I mean by that is Mandalorian literally says the word frog. Now, I don't know if frogs exist in Star Wars, but I'm gonna assume probably not until this episode made it canon, and honestly, I didn't really like that. I like Star Wars to operate in its own little corner of the universe. Instead of milk, it's blue milk. Small tweak, but to me it makes a world of difference, just separating our world from Star Wars. And then there are giant spiders. Like, they tweak it a little bit, but they're giant spiders. Okay, fine. In Lord of the Rings, I can deal with it because, well, they're sort of human characters, right? But Star Wars with giant spiders. I'm not so sure about that one. Maybe this is just a minor nitpick, but I sort of felt like it permeated throughout the entire episode. This episode didn't feel like Star Wars for the majority of it. In fact, once we got into the cave scene with the spiders and the eggs, you know what it felt like to me? It felt exactly like I was watching Goosebumps. Like everything's going normal and people are going about their daily lives or they're 
doing some task or something, and then someone does something wrong, Baby Yoda eats the egg, and all of a sudden hijinks ensues, and there are monsters and goosebumps. Now look, is this necessarily a bad thing? I don't think so, because honestly, I was thoroughly entertained. In fact, at some of the scenes, I was on the edge of my seat. I was telling Baby Yoda, no, don't do that, don't do that, and he did it. So good job, Peyton Reed, on that. And like I mentioned before, good job, great job, Peyton Reed, on the action sequences, the X-Wing versus Razor Quest sort of chase through the canyon. That was awesome. Even though I was watching on a smaller screen, it just made it feel like I was watching a movie, like a cinematic experience, and I love that about The Mandalorian. So again, do I think this episode is bad? Absolutely not. For those of you who think a B- is bad, please recheck your standards, because that doesn't mean I didn't like the episode. I did like the episode. There are certainly a lot of elements of the episode that felt like filler, but that also goes for episode 1 of season 2, and honestly a lot of The Mandalorian is filler, in my opinion at least. There are these very self-contained stories that you're really not going to remember, right? Like you can pick and choose episodes of The Mandalorian to watch, and that's great and all, but if you want to binge the entire season, there's not a huge point to doing that because you're not going to be following this huge overarching story. I could be wrong, episode 3 could prove me completely wrong, but again, Moff Gideon is not here. Boba Fett is not here. And just like season one, we are kind of right back to where we started, Mandalorian going out and looking for other Mandalorians. So while I do think the first two episodes of this season were much stronger than the first two episodes of last season, I can still also see some of the things I didn't like about season one permeating into season two. If you guys really enjoyed these episodes, that's great. I'm not trying to invalidate that at all. For me, I think story is one of the most important things when you're talking about television as well as characters, but we know we love the characters. I just kind of want an overarching story to start happening here, and it doesn't really look like that's about to manifest anytime soon. I don't think. I could be wrong, but I don't know. Maybe the eggs will be super important. I doubt it, but we'll see. Also, one final note, I might be crazy about this, I might have to go back and rewatch the episode and just listen for this again, but I think when the X-Wings are leaving, you can hear a little bit of John Williams' Resistance theme from the sequel trilogy. I could be wrong about it, but I listened and I believe I heard the Resistance theme. So if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below. But if you're watching the episode again, please listen for that because I'd love to know if I was right or wrong. Anyways, that about wraps up my review of Season 2, Episode 2 of The Mandalorian. What did you guys think of it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, then please make sure to subscribe and give this video a like. And if you want to see some more videos, then check out the videos on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.